Introduction to Psychology Chapter 4 Consciousness and Its Variations Lecture Script Created by Dr. Michael J. Alisea Adjunct Professor Miami-Dade College Kendall Campus Social Science Department Consciousness is your immediate awareness of your internal states, your thoughts, sensations, memories, and the external world around you. Even though your conscious experience is constantly changing, you do not experience your personal consciousness as disjointed. Rather, the subjective experience of consciousness has a sense of continuity. This characteristic of consciousness led the influential American psychologist William James to describe consciousness as a stream or river. Consciousness allows us to integrate past, present, and future behavior, guide future actions, and maintain a stable sense of self. Discussion questions. How do you define consciousness? What does it mean to you? Take a moment to view this crash course video on consciousness. You are always paying attention to something, just not always the stimuli that you are supposed to be paying attention to. For example, when your mind wanders, you are focusing on your internal environment, your daydreams or thoughts, rather than your external environment. Discussion questions. Why does that happen? What are the implications for this, if any? Attention is one of the oldest topics in psychology. And like consciousness, attention is difficult to define precisely. It is defined as the capacity to selectively focus our senses and awareness on stimuli or aspects of the environment. Most of the time, we can deliberately control our attentional processes, which helps us regulate our thoughts and feelings. Psychologists have identified several characteristics of attention, some of which have important implications for our daily life. These are 1. Attention has a limited capacity. At any given moment we are faced with more information than we can effectively process. We cannot pay attention to all the sights, sounds, or other sensations in our external environments. 2. Tension is selective. Attention is often compared to a spotlight that we shine on stimuli while ignoring others. A classic example of the selective nature of attention is the cocktail party effect. 3. Attention can be blind. Given the limited, selective nature of attention, it is not surprising that we sometimes completely miss what seem to be obvious stimuli in our field of vision or hearing. Magicians also exploit a phenomenon called inattentional blindness, which occurs when we simply do not notice some significant object or event that is in our clear field of vision. Because we have a limited capacity for attention, the more attention we devote to one task, the less we have for another. Thus, when we are engaged in one task that demands a great deal of our attention, we may fail to notice an event or object, especially if it is unexpected or unusual. Discussion questions. Does that have any implications with respect to our ability to manage multiple tasks? What it is about an unexpected or unusual event that facilitates our failure to notice it? Are there contributing factors to this failure to notice? Change blindness refers to not noticing when something changes, such as when a friend gets a haircut or shaves his beard. Multitasking refers to paying attention to two or more sources of stimuli at once, such as doing homework while watching television or talking on the phone while cooking dinner. In essence, multitasking involves the division of attention. Some people are better at handling multiple tasks than others. In general, tasks that are very different are least likely to interfere with each other. There are evidence that visual and auditory tasks draw on independent, different attention resources, at least for simple, well-rehearsed tasks. 
absorption in a visual task can produce inattentional deafness, and absorption in an auditory task can produce inattentional blindness. Discussion Questions What makes some people better at multitasking than others? Why the difference? Where are you inclined to be, visual or auditory, blindness? Throughout the course of each day, consciousness ebbs and flows in a natural rhythm. The most dramatic of these variations, of course, is our daily cycle of sleep and wakefulness. Circadian rhythm, a cycle or rhythm that is roughly 24 hours long, the cyclical daily fluctuations in biological and psychological processes. Your many circadian rhythms are controlled by a master biological clock, a tiny cluster of neurons in the hypothalamus in the brain. This cluster of neurons is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, abbreviated SCN. Environmental cues help keep circadian rhythms synchronized. The most important environmental cue is sunlight. However, exposure to artificial light, including that generated by computer or tablet screens, also influences circadian rhythms. As the sun sets, the decrease in available light is detected by the SCN, which then triggers an increase in the production of a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin is manufactured by the pineal gland, an endocrine gland located in the brain. In the absence of external time cues, our internal body clock drifts to its natural or intrinsic rhythm. Interestingly, our intrinsic circadian rhythm is about 24.2 hours or slightly longer than a day. Exposure to environmental time signals is necessary for us to stay precisely synchronized or entrained to a 24-hour day. The invention of the electroencephalograph by German psychiatrist Hans Berger in the 1920s gave sleep researchers an important tool for measuring the rhythmic electrical activity of the brain. These rhythmical patterns of electrical activity are referred to as brain waves. The electroencephalograph produces a graphic record called an EEG or electroencephalogram. By studying EEG, sleep researchers firmly established that brainwave activity systematically changes throughout sleep. Most people tend to think of sleep as an either slash or condition. The brain is either awake and active or asleep and idle. In fact, sleep researchers know that the sleeping brain does not just shut down during sleep. The sleeping brain remains active, although its patterns of activity are distinctly different from the patterns displayed by the waking brain. Sleep researchers distinguish between two basic types of sleep. REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep, is associated with heightened body and brain activity during which dreaming consistently occurs. In contrast, during NREM sleep, or non-rapid eye movement sleep, the body's physiological functions and brain activity slow down. The onset of sleep and hypnagogic hallucinations. Awake and reasonably alert as you prepare for bed, your brain generates small, fast brain waves, called beta brain waves. After your head hits the pillow and you close your eyes, your muscles relax. Your brain's electrical activity gradually gears down, generating slightly larger and slower alpha brain waves. During this drowsy, pre-sleep phase, you may experience odd but vividly realistic sensations called hypnagogic hallucinations, like hearing a loud crash or feeling as if you were flying. Some hypnagogic hallucinations can be so vivid or startling that they cause a sudden awakening. The first 90 minutes of sleep and beyond. The course of a normal night's sleep follows a relatively consistent cyclical pattern. As you drift off to sleep, you enter NREM sleep and begin a progression through the three NREM sleep stages. Each progressive NREM sleep stage is characterized by corresponding decreases in brain and body activity. On average, the progression through the first three stages of NREM sleep occupies the first 50 to 70 minutes of sleep. NREM sleep as the alpha brain waves of drowsiness are replaced by even slower theta brain waves, you enter the first stage of sleep. Lasting only a few minutes, stage one is a transitional stage during which you gradually disengage from the sensations of the surrounding world. 
during Stage 1 and REM, you can quickly regain conscious alertness if needed. Stage 2 represents the onset of true sleep. Stage 2 sleep is defined by the appearance of sleep spindles, brief bursts of brain activity that last a second or two, and K-complexes, single high-voltage spikes of brain activity. Theta waves are predominant in stage 2, but larger, slower brain waves, called delta brain waves, also begin to emerge. During the 15 to 20 minutes initially spent in stage 2, delta brain wave activity gradually increases. You now enter the deepest stage of sleep, stage 3 or slow wave sleep, so called because this stage of sleep is dominated by slow delta brain waves. At one time, stage 3 was divided into stages 3 and 4, with stage 3 considered the transitional stage from the light sleep of stage 2 to the deep sleep of stage 4. During the 20 to 40 minutes spent in the night's first episode of stage 3 and REM, delta waves eventually come to represent 100% of brain activity. At that point, heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing rate drop to their lowest levels. REM sleep. During REM sleep, the brain becomes more active, generating smaller and faster brain waves. Visual and motor neurons in the brain activate repeatedly, just as they do during wakefulness. Dreams usually occur during REM sleep. REM sleep is accompanied by considerable physiological arousal beyond the first 90 minutes. Throughout the rest of the night, the sleeper cycles between NREM and REM sleep. Each sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes on average, but the duration of cycles may vary from 70 to 120 minutes. Changing sleep patterns over the lifespan. As any parent knows, sleep patterns change throughout childhood and adolescence. Circadian rhythms seem to develop before birth. During the third trimester of prenatal development, active, REM, and quiet, NREM, sleep cycles emerge. Sleep patterns change throughout the lifespan. Total sleep time decreases, as does the percentage of a night's sleep spent in deeper slow wave sleep. The percentage of REM sleep increases during childhood and adolescence, remains stable throughout adulthood, and then decreases during late adulthood. Why do we sleep? Sleep researchers are not sure why we sleep. Sleep initiates a process that clears metabolic waste products from the brain. Sleep is also thought to maintain immune system function, improve brain function, enhance learning and consolidate memory, and help regulate moods and emotion. Some researchers take the view that the sleep patterns exhibited by different animals, including humans, are the result of evolutionary adaptation. Sleep plays a critical role in strengthening new memories and in integrating new memories with existing memories. Sleep seems to be especially important in preserving emotional memories and memories of details that are relevant to personal goals and preoccupations. Discussion questions. What is the significance of sleep for you? What is the longest period that you had deprived yourself of adequate sleep? What was the outcome of that for you? if any. New memories formed during the day are reactivated during the 90-minute cycles of sleep that occur throughout the night. This process of repeatedly reactivating these newly encoded memories during sleep strengthens the neuronal connections. The effects of sleep deprivation. The importance of sleep is demonstrated by sleep deprivation studies. After being deprived of sleep for just one night, research subjects develop microsleeps which are episodes of sleep lasting only a few seconds that occur during wakefulness. People who go without sleep for a day or more also experience disruptions in mood, mental abilities, reaction time, perceptual skills, and complex motor skills. When sleep is restricted to four hours or less in laboratory studies, concentration, reaction time, and memory are impaired. Harmful changes occur in hormone levels, including stress hormone levels, the immune system's effectiveness is diminished, increasing susceptibility to colds and infections. Sleep researchers have also selectively deprived people of different components of normal sleep. After several nights of being selectively deprived of REM sleep, the subjects can sleep uninterrupted. 
Dreams and Mental Activity During Sleep Dreams have fascinated people since the beginning of time. By adulthood, about 25% of a night's sleep, or almost two hours every night, is spent dreaming. More prevalent is sleep thinking, vague, thought-like ruminations about real events that usually occurs during NREM slow-wave sleep. Sometimes sleep thinking interferes with sleep, such as when anxious students toss and turn, reviewing terms and concepts during the night before an important exam. A dream is an unfolding sequence of perceptions, thoughts, and emotions during sleep that is experienced as a series of real-life events. It was once thought that dreams occurred exclusively during REM sleep, but new research reveals that dreams also occur during NREM sleep people usually have four or five dreaming episodes each night. The first REM episode of the night is the shortest, lasting only about 10 minutes. Subsequent REM episodes average around 30 minutes and tend to get longer as the night continues. PET and fMRI scans have revealed that the brain's activity during REM sleep is distinctly different from its activity during either wakefulness or NREM slow-wave sleep. Dream Themes and Imagery Dreams tend to be far more coherent, patterned, and thoughtful than is suggested. Most dreams are about everyday settings, people activities, and events. Apprehension and fear were the most frequently reported emotions, followed by happiness and confusion. Women were more likely to experience emotions in their dreams, and men more likely to experience physical aggression. Discussion questions. Why this distinction? Does it have any implications for females and males? Is this a more learned, expected, response from the different sexes? What part does culture play in all this, if any? The emotional tone of the average dream pales in comparison with the intensity of a nightmare, a vivid and disturbing dream that often awakens the sleeper. Typically, the dreamer feels helpless or powerless in the face of being aggressively attacked or pursued. As a rule, nightmares are not indicative of a psychological or sleep disorder unless they occur frequently, cause difficulties returning to sleep, or cause daytime distress. Freud believed that sexual and aggressive instincts are the motivating forces that dictate human behavior. Because these instinctual urges are so consciously unacceptable, sexual and aggressive thoughts, feelings and wishes are pushed into the unconscious or repressed. However, Freud believed that these repressed urges and wishes could surface in dream imagery. Discussion questions. What is your take on Freud's belief on dreams? What is your own take on dreams? Do they have meaning for you or not? Freud, 1904, believed that dreams have two components, the manifest content, or the dream images themselves, and the latent content, the disguised psychological meaning of the dream. In some types of psychotherapy today, especially those that follow Freud's ideas, dreams are still seen as an important source of information about psychological conflicts. Freud's belief that dreams represent the fulfillment of repressed wishes has not been substantiated by psychological research. The Activation Synthesis Model of Dreaming Researchers J. Alan Hobson and Robert W. McCarley first proposed a new model of dreaming in 1977, called the Activation Synthesis Model of Dreaming. This model maintains that dreaming is our subjective awareness of the brain's internally generated signals during sleep. According to the Activation Synthesis Model, dreams occur when brainstem circuits at the base of the brain activate and trigger higher brain regions, including visual, motor, and auditory pathways. Dream images are not symboling to be decoded. Rather, the meaning of dreams can be uncovered by understanding the deeply personal way the dreamer, once awake, makes sense of the chaotic progression of dream images. The Neurocognitive Theory of Dreaming 
In contrast to the activation synthesis model, the neurocognitive model of dreaming emphasizes the continuity between waking and dreaming cognition. According to William Domhoff, dreams are not a cognitive mishmash of random fragments of memories, images, and emotions generated by lower brainstem circuits as the activation synthesis model holds. Rather, dreams reflect our interests, personality, and individual worries. Discussion Questions Do you agree with this? Why or why not? Thank you.